Have you ever seen a fantastic movie with an excellent premise, great writing, directing, and visual effects, etc., all that stuff, all in one, and think, wow, there's no way they're going to top this. There's no way. This is an amazing movie. This is basically a masterpiece. There's no way they're going to do better than that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the bar has officially been raised, and I'm here to tell you the hype is real. Last night, I was fortunate to catch an early screen of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Miles Morales, Gwen Stacy, Peter B. Parker, they're all back with a ton other Spider-Man variants, including Spider-Man 2099, which is played by Oscar Isaac, and The Spot, played by Jason Schwartzman, I think that's how you say his name. I could tell you how many other Spider-Mans there are in this movie, but that would take all day. Why don't you just look at one of those YouTube channels with the breakdowns? I, I don't got time for all that. There's literally hundreds of Spider-Man in this movie. I will say this, my favorite new variant has to be this one called Spider-Punk, paid by Daniel Kaluuya. I think that's how you say his name. You know, the guy from Get Out. He had me rolling. That was hands down one of my favorite newcomers of this, of this movie. What I loved about this movie was very diverse and had awesome representation. Matter of fact, there's this Indian Spider-Man that they introduced, and I was sitting next to an Indian person. You could just see the awe in his face. He was just happy to be represented. And if you're one of those people that hate diversity, grow up, virgin. So let me give a quick premise of this movie. The story brings us back to Miles' universe, where he is taking the full-time job of being Spider-Man. And just like every Spider-Man movie, it's hard for him to balance his responsibility in both lives. He also misses his Spider-Man friends from the previous movie. So while he's doing his thing as Spider-Man and the other multiverses, many of the Spider-Man, including Gwen and Peter B, have joined a Spider-Man agency formed by the lead, Miguel O'Hara, the one that's played by Oscar Isaac. After Miles gets a visit from Gwen, he finds out about this organization. He desperately wants to join this club. But unfortunately, he finds out later that this group of Spider-Men are not the group he wants to be associated with. On top of that, there is a D-list villain named The Spot that has given the multiverse more issues than expected. Like I said, the bar has been raised for this franchise, but not just the Spider-Man movies, but also the comic book movies and animation in general. I felt at times I was looking at a visual art show instead of a movie. I'm dead serious. This animation is next level. My mind was melting in a good way. The humor is still there, but the dramatics are at an all-time high. The conflicts Miles and the other Spider-Man had to deal with are gut-wrenching. I was very impressed by the introduction and development that we got from the other Spider-People in such a short time. It's hard to juggle that in a two-hour-plus movie. In fact, I was bummed when this movie was over because I could have watched another two hours of this. They've already announced that there is a second part to this movie, so just know it does end in a cliffhanger. I'm happy it's only gonna be a year of this wait because I need answers ASAP. Personally, as a character goes, I do see a lot of myself in Miles. He put me back in that high school mindset of coming to age, but I can also relate to his parents as well of raising a child that, you know, just gives them issues and just trying to do the best they can with him. I also looked at my son and I saw him looking at me during the movie and understanding Miles' point of view as well. Maybe one day he'll understand the parents' point of view too. There are many unexpected cameos, and there's more potential than ever to see a crossover with the, our three favorite spider friends from the live action series. If I had any complaints, it was I wanted to see more of a reunion between the original cast, with the exception of Gwen, who we actually do get a better backstory with her, like there's more fleshed backstory that we get with her, but I did want to see a little bit more of Peter B. Parker, don't really get to see Peter Porker a lot, don't really get to see the anime girl a lot, you don't really get to see Spider Noir a lot, you know, it's, so they, they kind of get a, a backdrop to this movie, because of course there's a lot of other Spider-Men that they are showing, but other than that, like I said, this is a first part of a two-parter, I have a feeling you will get to see more of that in the future, in the, in the second installment, uh, but I am very excited for the second one, because the way this ends... Your jaw is going to be on the ground. You're going to be like, oh, snap. Because it's nothing that ties into the comics. It's nothing that ties into anything that's like canon. It's just, it's something that's like, wow, they're going for it. All right. I'm very intrigued how they do that. Anyways, that's all I have to say about it. Uh, best superhero movie of the year. Probably the best movie of the year so far for me. <clears throat> this has been a good year for superhero movies. We've had Guardians 3, we've had Flash, and now we had 
across the Spider-Verse, and like I said, very good. It, I'm very surprised again how they up in the level of this one from the original because the original was really really good and yeah uh, probably best spider-man movie as well so please i definitely suggest to go out and see it 10 out of 10 miles morales you are the goat i i am looking forward to uh the part two but let me know your thoughts in the comments who's your favorite spider-man who are you looking forward to seeing in this movie and what were your thoughts of this movie if you've seen it much love peace and chicken grease